and we find ourselves short during your term as mayor, what then? Anybody want to answer that one? <laughs> well, we're going to have to come back to the table again. But even with if things don't continue to be as bad as they are today, the reality is that whoever's the next mayor is going to have to step in and use what's in the consensus package, which is a reform of the Health Services Board to bring about some, some responsible changes. And beyond that, we've got to address the fact that the city's workforce, and if I were still a city employee, I'd be among them, is overweight. With 30% of our workforce is obese, 30% of the kids being covered under city health plans are obese. And we've got to address healthier lifestyles. And I think that that's something that if you really work with your city workforce, I think Mayor Newsom did some of it, but I think we've really got to do what you see Kaiser and other forward-thinking companies do, which is improve the health of your workforce. Speaking of health, real quick here. Real quick here. Um, can San Francisco continue with its health, present health benefits? Health I mean, pension is one thing. Are we going to, is health reform on the table next? Who wants to do that? Well, Healthy San Francisco is going to change tremendously with the implementation of federal health care legislation. And um, I will say that the possible entrance of Mayor Lee liberates me in some respects. So let's be honest, the Healthy San Francisco program, a lot of people are going to migrate but individuals that, that are immigrants and are not documented are not. No, I'm talking about the workers' health care packages and the retirees. Can we continue to afford that, Dennis? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, I think part of the beauty of the consensus <clears throat> proposal, which I think Michaela is right to call it the consensus proposal, is that it is the most comprehensive. The uh, Adachi proposal only dealt with one side of the equation, the pension side. It didn't deal with um, the health care side. And the fact that police and fire and labor in general came to the table uh, and negotiated, gave us a great uh, framework, I think, to deal with both issues moving forward. And I think if you look at what happened for six months and you had labor sitting at the table with those of us in, in uh, city government and business leaders, uh, that was a model for what happens when you build, a, a, take a collaborative approach, a comprehensive approach, and you are sort of forward thinking. I think that what, obviously neither of these plans are panaceas in and of themselves, but this certainly provides the framework as we move forward. If we have to make other adjustments, we'll all be at the table dealing with the same uh, document and making sure that we do what's in the best fiscal interest of the city and county of San Francisco. We should also be pressing on our federal policymakers to transform uh, uh, health insurance overall. I mean, every This is not just a, an issue that's having a, a significant negative, negative impact on our public employees, but every single business owner I speak to is getting strangled by the cost of, of providing right. health insurance. So this is a pervasive problem that's impacting <coughs> everybody. I think that's exactly right. Health insurance, I remember when I was the head of a nonprofit, would go, our health insurance costs would go up 20% a year. I know that as small businesses, as businesses, that was an issue, not just locally, but really nationwide. Uh, the big issue that we didn't tackle with the health uh, care reform package in Washington was around cost control. I think cost control is going to be extremely critical, not just for San Francisco, but for everywhere else, because if that's, that issue is not contained, it's not just going to be San Francisco's problem, it's going to be the entire country's problem. And, our, and you can watch the effects of our economy. I want to just chip in a couple other thoughts. Uh, the consensus measure actually does require workers to kick into health care. That's a very important thing to remember. But also, if we take a step back, San Francisco has had, over the last 10 years, structural budget deficits almost every single year. And the real problem is uh, we are focused only on trying to balance our budget within the year that we're in, and we kick liabilities down the road. Uh, and this is why, a couple years ago, I asked all the voters in San Francisco to pass a budget reform charter amendment that will require the next mayor, for the first time, to balance the budget over a two-year period, and also to start implementing five-year financial forecasting. Uh, these are all measures that will make sure that we are balancing our budgets for the long term. Uh, because if we don't, we are going to have to go back to the table again with our friends from labor and figure out how to further rein in costs. Uh, but we do have newer tools now to make sure that we are fiscally disciplined uh, every single year for years to come. Uh, if I may, oh. add one, one, more, one more thing, uh, which is if, and, and um, Bevan alluded to this, uh, if we don't, if people aren't healthy, then the cost of the city is greater. So right now we have San Francisco General running at 110 capacity. We can't afford for people to continue to get sick. Uh, we uh, almost lost St. Luke's Hospital a few years back 
uh, St. Francis right now has a huge strain on uh, their emergency rooms for just basic care. And so if we're not taking an active role in ensuring that um, our children uh, are being dealt with properly so that we can start lowering the um, amount of you know, childhood diabetes in our community, especially in the lower income areas around St. Luke's Hospital in San Francisco General, and if we're not proactive with um, health care, then we're going to ultimately be paying a lot more regardless. And so a lot of what San Francisco, Healthy San Francisco helps us do is, you know, it is a beginning way of helping people get those, get medical attention before um, the real costs kick in. And when we start talking about insurance companies, it becomes extremely difficult because they're the largest monopoly in the world, in, in the United States. You know, there's no competition in the insurance market. And so that's going to always be this giant beast that we're going to have a hard time dealing with. And so if San Francisco can somehow, uh, you know, work through the system before we get to a point where people are extremely sick, uh, it would certainly be a lot better for the city of San Francisco. All right, now we're going to change it up a little again.